So this section is on power functions, and we've already talked a little bit about power functions in the past. Here are the form y equals k x to the p. k is just some number, p is a real number as well. So looking at these problems, determine which of the following um, are power functions. We can look at the number in front and the variable raised to a power. So in this case, negative 5 is a real number, 3 is a real number. So negative 5x cubed is a power function. Same idea for 7x to the negative 2. Um, the power can be a positive or negative real number, and 7 is a real number. So we're still good. For j, it first appears like, well, that might not be a power function, but the square root, remember, can be rewritten as a power. Remember, that's the square root is the 2, and the power is the 1. So this is the 1 over 2 power. So again, because 1 half is a real number, we're still good. However, for letter k, or the k of x, this doesn't represent a power function. You can only have one term in the power function. You can't have a whole bunch of other things added or subtracted to it. So in this case, it is not. The general function has an equation y equals kx to the p. Now we're going to take a look at the behavior of a power function um, by graphing it. So first we're going to look at when the powers are even numbers, what do these all have in common? And probably a quick way to do this is to just pull up your calculator and let me bring it down to where we can see it a little bit better. Oops. All right, so what I'm going to do is go in, clear out all my junk here, and type in those three functions, x to the 2, x to the 4, and x to the 6, remembering that the x key is right here. Next thing I'm going to do is go into my table set. So do second window. And I want to make sure that my independent variable, remember that's the input for your x's, is on ask. I want to be able to tell it what to put in for x, and then it'll automatically come out the dependent variable or the y value. So once I've got it set up on ask, and to do that you just scroll down and then hit enter, and it'll toggle back and forth on that. I can go into the table, so do second, graph, and I can type in my own numbers, and I've already done that here. I've typed in the negative 2, and in y sub 1, that was my x squared term. So negative 2 squared is my number 4. And then negative 2 to the 4th, that was my 16, and negative 2 to the 6th, positive 32. So again, if I look back at my calculator, which seems to be lost there, there we go, I see the 4 and the 16, and I have to scroll over to catch the, um, whoop, that should be 64, not 32. Good catch with the calculator. Okay. And then if you plug in for negative 1 and raise it to the 6th power, you see my answer is 1. 0 to the 6th power is 0, 1 to the 6th is 1, and then 2 to the 6th, back to 64. All right. And so I can fill in, using my calculator, just the numbers in the chart there. So in my y2 column, that was x to the 4th. So this represented y sub 1, this was my y sub 2, and that's what I had typed into my y sub 3 in my calculator. All right. So you can go ahead and finish filling in those values there. So we've got um, what, 16, 1, 0, 1, 16. And this was going to be 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. And then rather than graph this up, I'm just going to take a look at the picture of it on the calculator. Um, go back into your y equals, and you can look at these one at a time. 
by just turning off the equals there. So now it's just going to show me what y equals x squared looks like. So I'll hit graph. And notice both ends are up. And it looks a bit like a horseshoe. I can put the next one in. All right, so now the first one that I'm going to see is y equals x squared. The second one, x to the fourth. Notice it's a little flatter on the bottom and then goes up quicker. So we would expect y equals x to the sixth to be even flatter and go up even quicker. And that's kind of what we see. It goes up quicker and is even flatter. So those of you with a graphing calculator that has the color option, um, you'll kind of be able to see a little bit better the difference in the three graphs. What I'd like for you to do now is to go to the next page um, and then fill in the chart using your graphing calculator and the table feature. Remember you go into y equals, change your values. So this time we're looking at odd powers. So three and five. And we don't have a seven, so we're just gonna clear that one out. And then fill in your chart and take a look at the graphs of both of those. Um, when you're done, look at the graphs, compare them, and describe the general shape, um, and do the bottom example there. If P is positive and even, what does it look like? If P is positive and odd, what does it look like?